the conspiracy of the equals or society of the Panthen was a faction within the French Revolution led by François Noël Bayboeuf. Background It was the attempts of the Directory to deal with the economic crisis that gave Bayboeuf his historical importance. The new government was pledged to abolish the system by which Paris was fed at the expense of all France and the cessation of the distribution of bread and meat at nominal prices was fixed for 20 February 1796. The announcement caused the most widespread consternation. Not only were the workmen and the large class of proletarians attracted to Paris by the system, but rentiers and government officials, whose incomes were paid in assignates on a scale arbitrarily fixed by the government, saw themselves threatened with starvation. The government yielded to the outcry, but the expedients by which it sought to mitigate the evil, notably the division of those entitled to relief into classes, only increased the alarm and discontent. The universal misery gave point to virulent attacks by Bayboeuf on the existing order, and gained him a hearing. He gathered around him a small circle of followers known as the Société des Ego, soon merged with the rump of the Jacobin Club, who met at the Panthen, and in November 1795 he was reported by the police to be openly preaching insurrection, revolt and the constitution of 1793. They were influenced by Sylvain Marécal, the author of Le Manifeste des Ego and a sympathizer of Bayboeuf. Growth for a time the government, while keeping itself informed of his activities, left him alone. It suited the directory to let the socialist agitation continue, in order to deter the people from joining in any royalist movement for the overthrow of the existing regime. Moreover the mass of the ouvriers, even of extreme views, were repelled by Bayboeuf's bloodthirstiness, and the police agents reported that his agitation was making many converts for the government. The Jacobin Club refused to admit Bayboeuf and Lebois on the ground that they were egorges. With the development of the economic crisis, however, Bayboeuf's influence increased. After the Club of the Panthen was closed by Napoleon Bonaparte on 27 February 1796, his aggressive activity redoubled. In Ventos and Germinal he published, under the nom de plume of Lalande, sold at de la Patrie, a new paper, The Eclaire du Peuple, à la défense de Van GT 5 millions de primes, which was hawked clandestinely from group to group in the streets of Paris. At the same time issue 40 of the Tribune excited an immense sensation. In this Bayboeuf praised the authors of the September massacres as deserving well of their country, and declared that a more complete, the 2nd of September, was needed to annihilate the actual government, which consisted of starvers, bloodsuckers, tyrants, hangmen, rogues and mountebanks. The distress among all classes continued, and in March the attempt of the directory to replace the assignates by a new issue of mandats created fresh dissatisfaction after the breakdown of the hopes first raised. A cry went up that national bankruptcy had been declared, and thousands of the lower class of ouvriers began to rally to Bayboeuf's flag. On 4 April 1796, the government received a report that 500,000 people in Paris were in need of relief. From the 11th of April, Paris was placarded with posters headed Analyse de la Doctrine de Bibeuf, Sic Tribune du Peuple, of which the opening sentence ran, Nature has given to every man the right to the enjoyment of an equal share in all property, and which ended with a call to restore the Constitution of 1793, Fall of the Conspiracy. Bayboeuf's song Moran de Fame, Moran de Freud, set to a popular tune, began to be sung in the cafes, with immense applause, and reports circulated that the disaffected troops of the French Revolutionary Army in the camp of Grenelle were ready to join an insurrection against the government. The directory thought it time to react. The Bureau Central had accumulated through its agents, notably the ex-captain Georges Grizzle, who had been initiated into Bayboeuf's society, complete evidence of a conspiracy for an armed rising fixed for Florey all 22, year IV. 
in which Jacobins and socialists were combined. On 10 May Bayboff, who had taken the pseudonym to sit, was arrested. Many of his associates were gathered by the police on order from Lazarus Carnot. Among them were August and Alexander Darthe and Philippe Buonarita, the ex-members of the National Convention, Robert Lindet, Jean-Pierre André Amar, Marc Guillaume Alexis Vadier and Jean-Baptiste Drouet, famous as the postmaster of Saint Menehold who had arrested Louis XVI during the latter's flight to Varennes, and now a member of the Directory's Council of 500. The government crackdown was extremely successful. The last number of the Tribune appeared on 24 April, although Le Bois and the Amy du Peuple tried to incite the soldiers to revolt, and for a while there were rumours of a military rising. The trial of Babeuf and his accomplices was fixed to take place before the newly constituted High Court of Justice at Vendôme. On Fructidor door 10 and 11, when the prisoners were removed from Paris, there were tentative efforts at a riot with a view to rescue, but these were easily suppressed. The attempt of five or six hundred Jacobins to rouse the soldiers at Grenelle met with no better success. The trial of Babeuf and the others, begun at Vendôme on 20 February 1797, lasted two months. The government for reasons of their own depicted the socialist Babeuf as the leader of the conspiracy, even though people more important than himself were implicated, and his own vanity played admirably into their hands. On Prairial 7 Babeuf and Darthe were condemned to death, some of the prisoners, including Buonarita, were deported, the rest, including Vadir and his fellow conventionals, were acquitted. Drouet had succeeded in making his escape, according to Paul Barris, with the connivance of the directory. Babeuf and Darthe were guillotined the next day at Vendôme, Prairial 8, without appeal. Legacy Although the words anarchist and communist did not exist at the time of the conspiracy, they have all been used to describe its ideas by later scholars. The English word communism was coined by Goodwin Barmby in a conversation with those he described as the disciples of Babeuf.